Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I got the Caterpillar RD6 starting engine in the shop today. I pulled this off the tractor a couple days ago because there's a uh, bearing back here on the pinion shaft that's very rough, very noisy. I need to get in and replace that. So um, I also made a video of the uh, steps involved in removing this entire assembly from the tractor. Uh, if you didn't catch that video, I'll put a link in the description below. You can click on over there right now and check that out first. If not, or if you've already seen it, we'll just get right into uh, getting this whole clutch drive and uh, pinion assembly off of the engine. We'll take this little cover off. You can see some of the over center clutch parts in there. That's where you do a lot of your adjustments, things like that. I've already taken all the bolts out to hold the clutch housing to the engine block. Really nothing special there, nothing hard to get at, so didn't figure I needed to show you that. Uh, one thing I like to do though, is engage the clutch. That's gonna hold the uh, clutch disc stationary between the pressure plates here for when I remove this, you'll uh, get a better idea why in just a couple minutes here when I get it apart. But And um, I'm probably gonna have to uh, wedge this housing off of the block. There's a couple of dowel pins that uh, maintain alignment there and up there. They can uh, create kind of a tight fit. So I'll reposition the camera here and we'll get this thing pulled off the engine. And I should also mention that there's really nothing you need to worry about disconnecting inside this clutch housing. Everything just pretty much slides into uh, the flywheel on the back of the starting engine. So as long as you can get it off the dowels, it should slide right apart. Just like that. You can see in here, you got all these teeth around the uh, the outer diameter of the clutch disc, they just slide right into uh, fingers inside the bell housing. So just slides right apart, pretty simple. So with the drive on the bench here, hopefully you guys can get a little better view of some of the uh, components inside here. We have this uh, bronze uh, throwout yoke. We have the uh, clutch dogs, cams, links, um, clutch disc right here between the two pressure plates. I'll unlock that clutch now. And you can see how that just allows the clutch disc to uh, float around. That's why I had that locked up, kind of keep all that held uh, in alignment for when I pulled it off the engine. So I'm going to uh, completely disassemble this because actually the, uh, uh, the bearing that I need to replace is the last thing that comes off the shaft. So to start that process, I'll get the pinion sleeve off. This one uses the old retention method of the uh, tie wire going through the uh, cross-drilled holes through the heads of the sleeve bolts. Um, you'll probably see fold-over locks under these as well. Those locks are a much better retention method, and I'm actually going to upgrade these to the, uh, the fold-overs with new bolts too. But uh, anyway, to start the process, I'll get these wires out of the way, get the bolts out, and we'll start by removing the sleeve. Another tip real quick, it uh, helps a lot to take these uh, sleeve bolts out you've got the pinion engaged that way you're not uh, fighting the tension of the kickout spring pushing up on this whole assembly binding these uh, threaded bolts into their bores once the bolts are out just release the latches let the pinion drift up and the sleeve will come off the gear just let the gear set down like that next step now will be to uh, unfold the little lock tabs on each side of the latch nut so that we can get that loose so once you get the latch nut loose, it just threads out, and there's some spring tension behind it, so uh, be ready. There we go. So you have the latch nut that the pinion latches grab onto, and the kickout rod that presses on the sleeve. We'll discard the fold-over lock, and remove the kickout springs. There's two of them, that's the outer one, and a smaller inner one. And then the gear can come off followed by the three bolts and bearing retention plate. Working in through the side of the clutch housing now, uh, this next part might be a little difficult to get on camera, but I'll do my best. So what I'm gonna do is uh, disengage the little plunger here that, <clears throat> that maintains your uh, clutch spider adjustment. Uh, pull it out so it completely disengages from the rear pressure plate, and then thread that spider all the way off of the threads that are on this plate, completely disengage it. There we go. It's loose. Now I'll need a flashlight. I'll spin this around until I can find the key. Here we are that holds this uh, pressure plate, both these pressure plates to the shaft. What I can do now is slide that back and get it around so hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here. We can see that little square headed key down in there. 
So if you can get just enough clearance and get in there with some pliers, pull that key out right there. With that key out of the bore, both pressure plates and clutch disc can come off. So now that I have the uh, clutch disc out of the way, I can give you a little bit better visual representation of what I was trying to accomplish there. You have this hole in the front pressure plate and the key. Key drops down in that hole and this key sticks through the inside and goes into that hole in the shaft and that's what holds the front pressure plate on. Now this uh, rear pressure plate has this little square cutout right here. So when it slides over here, get it so it lines up, it will cover up that key, keep it retained so it can't pop out. So that's why you need to back the spider off so that you could drift this back enough to access that key, pull it out, and the whole deal comes off the front. So at this point now, you can just drift the shaft right out the back, and uh, this is one of the looser fitting ones that I've been into. So just a uh, like a soft faced hammer gently on the end of the shaft should take it right out. Uh, some of them that have been a lot tighter, I've ended up having to uh, actually press that shaft out. This one wasn't bad, so there's that bearing I need to uh, replace. And at this time now, you can take the uh, engagement yoke, clutch spider, disengage them from the fork, and they can all come out as an assembly. So if a guy was going to go any further with this, uh, the next thing you'd have to do is uh, drill out, and maybe hopefully you can see there's a taper pin in this collar up here, the sleeve that goes all the way through. You'd have to drill out the end of that pin. Here's an example of one that I just uh, removed from another one of these drives. There's the end that I drilled. You can see how it's peened over on that end. Um, drill one into that pin, drive it out. This uh, little collar will come off. You can then take your levers off. Then you go in here, unfold the two locks, remove these two um, pinch bolts that are on the fork. You can then slide the fork up the shaft far enough to remove two wood, wood roof keys that locate the fork to the shaft and the shaft will come out the top, fork will come out, it'll all be good. But uh, I don't have to go that far on this one, I'm just going to clean this housing and uh, call that good. So, take the shaft over to the uh, vise here and work on getting this bearing off. Okay, I got the shaft in the vise, I got the soft jaws on so as to uh, avoid any damage to it. First step is to get that fold over uh, lock tab down. Then the nut comes off. And of course, discard the fold over lock. Now the final bit of disassembly for this repair is going to uh, be getting the bearing and this uh, steel sleeve off the shaft. Uh, for some reason the parts manual calls this uh, sleeve a seal. It's not really a seal, but I suppose it fits it'll fit the inner diameter of this uh, bearing retention plate close enough that it will prevent any major pieces of debris from getting into the bearing. But uh, under normal conditions, you would have to press these pieces off. Of course, support around this uh, spacer so that you're not uh, putting excess uh, uh, strain through this bearing. But as usual, for some reason, this shaft and uh, bearing and everything just doesn't seem to be putting up much of a fight today. And I think I could probably just uh, actually tap it right off the shaft. So we'll see what happens here. Yep, I think it's moving already. Yep, so no pressing today. I think I say normally this would not happen, but for some reason everything on here just doesn't seem to be that tight of a fit. So there's the bad bearing, and we'll get their steel seal off there too. So that should conclude the disassembly process. So now I've got to give all these parts a really good cleaning and uh, I'm going to thoroughly inspect everything and correct any other issues that I can find as long as I'm into it. And I've got this pile of nice shiny parts here right from Caterpillar. Um, guys, it's really amazing how many parts Cat still stocks for these old 1930s era machines. Uh, sometimes it's really nice just to go down to the parts department and pick up what you need. They still got quite a bit of stuff. So uh, stay tuned for the next video where I start putting all this stuff together. We'll start getting these uh, parts out of these uh, packages and boxes and start get them, getting them in the drive unit. So hope to see you guys back for that and I thank you for watching.